There we are. Hello, everybody. We're going to go into Master of Magic. I, I gotta admit, I haven't tried out this version at all, so this is going to be blind entry. But the good thing is, I know my way around this pretty okay-ish, I think. I hope. At least, if they didn't change too much. So, AI skill advanced. Interesting. Let's leave it like that. That's a new number. Oh no, that's the amount of spell books that I get. So, I was positively... Or, no, I, I'm so thrilled to, to play this. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to play this, finally. Ah, uh, here, those settings are... Ah, uh, now I get it. So we're playing a normal difficulty part of matchup, why not? And uh, here we go. So we get to select our, our, ma our mages. They, they looked all a lot more crappy in the version that I played back then. And, uh, well... So, where do we start? I would love to play this old buddy here of mine now. Are we gonna? Yeah, we're going to. Come on. It's the start I played a lot. And uh, I want to get enrolled with it. So, spells. The spells are the ones... Wait a sec. Okay, I, I guess I can select my chaos spells afterwards. So, what do I want to have? Healing is pretty good. Heroism is super powerful. And, uh, well, yeah, well, Guardian, Sp Guardian Spirit ain't that important, honestly. Starfire. Oh, yeah, that's useful. When you need it, you really can use it. So, Chaos Spells. What are we going to pick us up there? Eldritch Weapon. Never been a big fan of that. Warp wood is amazing. It destroys the enemy's capability of shooting at you. Firebolt, some direct damage. Hellhounds, they never heard. Fire elemental, hell yeah. Alrighty, so we're going to start with a Murren race because we're starting on a different world. These are all the species that you can play. They all have their own setup of, uh, of creatures they can play with. I'm a big fan of the Dark Elves because uh, they are quite cheesy and they I, I like them. And, uh, hey, Dave, hi there. So, uh, well, why can't I say this game is for me a, a trip down nostalgia lane, you know? I cannot fathom how many, how many hours of my life I have played the original version of Microprose. Hi, effects. And, uh, this game here is, is just, uh, er, no thanks. I don't want any tutorials, thank you. I just need to know where everything's at. So, this is, uh, this is civilization magic style, so to say. There's only one thing that I don't know, but we'll find that out. Alright, so Agony Rock, our wonderful little city of Agony Rock, comes with a swordsman and some settlers, right on. We have two farmers, two workers, and some rebels. So. What to build first? Mm. One of the first things I always built up was a granary, but uh... Do we already have one? Did they kill the granary? Is that no longer a thing? Granary is a was a building, or is a building that inc increases your population growth, but somehow... I find them all, but not the granary anymore. What did you do to my little thing there? So then, we're going to go for for what? Mm, what do we have around our city? Well, oh, whatever. Let's go for a library. I think that's going to be a great pick first off. Going to be finished in 12 uh, turns. Although I'm a little bit confused. Whatever. So, Agony Rock sits in a river mouth. Yeah has more income, and can host a ton of people in there. Wonderful. Okay, so... Uh, we could, of course, also get ourselves some spearmen going. Yeah, I like that. I deal more. Let's start with one unit and then go for a building. Okay, let's do this.
Get our dudes on over there. Okay, so a couple of the uh, star of these things that I'm used to got changed. Ah, we start with the granite right now. Okay, we have that right from the get-go. How useful. So at least my memory doesn't fail me. But uh, in the past, I, I remember having a spearman and a swordsman. Not only a swordsman, but you cannot send those settlers alone. They, they would really be in trouble. So, what are we going to research? Mm, just cause, bless, eldritch weapon, summoning circle, disable magic, disrupt, endurance. Shouldn't I get some tooltip about what these spells do? Or, ah, yeah, I just click them. I see. So, movement rate is just amazing. It's never a bad thing in that. Destroying fortifications per... Eldritch Weapon is basically only good because it kills off the magic immunity of enemies. Apart from that, it's an overpriced spell, in my opinion at least. It has its qualities. It, it scares enemies, if I remember correctly. But, uh, yeah, bless. Bless is great, but I think I'm going to roll with Endurance for starters. So what do we have here, and uh, where's the... is there a uh, hotkey for... let's see... Toggle guard, toggle skip, combat block book... I'm missing one specific uh, menu, but whatever. Okay, then. So that's my boy. We have researched. I have 30 mana available. It's not enough for summoning hellhounds. Too bad. Okay, but uh, that's enough for that turn. Here's end turn. Okay. So... I'm quite surprised that, that that's something I don't understand. There was in the past a option to turn on a filter that uh, allowed you to check on out um, which areas on the map were especially especially good for a for building a city. And that filter lens, I don't find it anymore. Whatever, we're summoning ourselves some hellhounds next. We got gold here, yeah, here. So wait, how do you, how does one interact with these? Uh... Well, that would have been probably explained in the tutorial, but on the other hand, let's see. So let's, let's reset the tutorial, so. Ah, well, that would be only triggering in the next uh, gameplay. Just wondering where I can analyze the terrain. So... I know these. Right? The whole interface is a lot more glossy. It was much, much darker in the original version. Hey, Calder, welcome. Well, I was quite shocked about the price for this one, I gotta say. I, I didn't expect it that costly, but on the other hand, well, it's Slytherin. They aren't cheap. So that that's a little bit sad. In the old version, you could press F1 and then your cursor would, would have given you a, a nice readout about the uh, qualities of the environment. There's a, there's a city called Forge Hammer. It's bad. A couple of dwarf swor swordsmen hold them, but uh, what's really bad about it is the fact that we can't settle there. Okay, so uh, that's been a bit loud. Alright, so that means no new city for us here at this point. But seriously, no tool to when you mouse over something? Guys? What happened? I don't understand that. <laughs> okay. I mean, I do know that this is gold. I do know that this is probably iron and makes your troops cheaper, but 
come on, I have lived in this game, I know that, but uh, what about the other folks? So, Fallen Temple, yeah, I know what a Fallen Temple is good for. Beware, this place might be guarded. Temple's abandoned. Learned a spell out of that, amazing. Seriously, where, where's the ability to analyze the terrain? terrain that uh, somebody... <laughs> so, I come bearing gifts. I offer you a magic spirit. What's that? Oh, there, there are events now. That's a new, uh, that's a new uh, development. What well, wasn't the thing in back way back when? That's pretty cool. That's one development I do like. Oh, hellhounds have three movement units now. I remember having them too. Okay. So well. We have now a, a magic spirit hanging around. That's pretty cool, because that means we can now explore even some more. So, okay. So, special actions, build outpost. Yeah, no, no shit, Sherlock. I, I'd really like to know why the hell we're, uh, we're we're supposed to know without any designators where to settle down. This, I, I don't want to sound mopey, but that's that's really bad, like like super bad, because you know, I know how a good spot for a city that looks like in this game, but how on earth should somebody who's new here know that? And why is that menu not there? So, uh, we're, we're going to restart that. Quick without saving. Pretty sure I saw a surveyor option. There must be. There must be. We're just going to restart that matchup. I must have, uh... I just thought you could just access it via the hotkeys easily. But let's click through the tutorial. And, uh, we're, we're going to play some... Yeah, let's play some Toron. I like this guy. He just likes to blow up things. That's a great characteristic. So, exchanging that with that. There. Well, oh boy. Doom bats. Mm, they're costly. Flame blade, quite costly yet powerful. Ah, let's go lightning bolt. Lightning bolt is a great, great active spell. I like that one. Let's play some Hymen. Why not? Hymen are, are quite great. Quite balanced and all. Bottom right or enter? I, I checked out the hotkey menu. Oh, well, let's check it up. Maybe, uh, maybe you saw more than me there. So... Let's zoom in. Mirror plane. Surveyor mode tab. Are you kidding me? Like seriously? And then you... Please tell me that I overlooked that. Okay, I overlooked that. Great. That, that would have been really pissing me off. Good. So, never mind me. So, uh, yeah. Move the map. Good. Okay. Now I'm, now I'm back on track. Whatever happened to the spearmen that you started with in the old version? Thanks, Alexander. I thought that really helped me out. I don't know why they left that feature on F1 for uh, for for people coming back like me, but whatever. Ain't that much of a problem. So uh, here with this dude, we we can only research terribly too hard spells for us because basically all the chaos ma magic we already know. Chimeras, I like those. Takes us ages to research that. It's going to take ages to be able to cast that, but it's no problem. So, yeah, obviously all cities start with a granary nowadays. So I guess that was the down downgrade. You you get the granary, but you don't get the spearmen anymore. 
that's a good trade. The spearman is way cheaper than the than the granary. So Yeah. Can I summon me some hellhounds? I really hope so. Yeah. There we go. So let's, let's check on out if this works out better. Hey, Graf Gaming, sorry I overread you for about for a moment. You're welcome. Appreciate it. So We're definitely not going in there. Four squads of zombies versus one squad of hellhounds. That won't that won't have a happy end. So our our settler squad, well we don't have anything there. What's that? Tower of Sorcery. Interesting. I don't know these. So, what do we have here? We gained some mana. Awesome. With that mana, we're just going to slap down another, par another party of Hellhounds there. Because, you know, the more the merrier. Here, those spearmen, they are really only meant to guard this place. Because I really feel extremely scared with no troops in my in my city at all. So let's set up a library. Nah, well no. We're going to for the shrine. Shrine into library. There we go. The shrine does uh, have that nice effect to pacify your people. I didn't mean to send you guys there, but whatever. So let's see. Jeez, there's a lot of ruins around there. We're not producing enough food. Food produced versus food consumed is 6 of 4. Ah yeah, here we are on a minus 1. That's because every troop requires uh, food to be fed. Not our hellhounds, but uh, the spearmen here added into that. Okay, so you fools, you belong into the city and you stay in that city, thank you. Them hellhounds though, they can join on up. And what do we have here? We gain more mana! Awesome. I'm not going to spend any of that right now because uh, I want to leave some mana for spells. So... What are the choices if I don't take that one? Take the spirit, take gold, take mana? Well, right now, I'm rather taking the spirit. I have to pay upkeep costs for them, but there's one brilliant thing about them spirits. They are able to traverse water, so... Therefore, we can just take that Guardian Spirit and uh, send him across the shore. It's pretty good. There we go. And let's see what my what my Hellhounds can find. And you guys, isn't there a Fortify? F for Fortify. There we go. So... Sadly, haven't found the the town yet blocking my my dudes off from building. Well, it must be G then, not not F. All right, so two units of skeletons versus two units of hellhounds. That should totally work on out. So we're not going to do auto fight. Leave me alone. By all means. Horrible. Okay, so. This has always been the very, very best part about Master of Magic. So these dudes 
well, we're going to we're going to step forward, Dad, and uh, so flee, combat lock, auto combat, chance melee attack. No, where's the buttons? There. In turn, next unit. Mm -hmm. All right. So spacebar to switch between these. All right, got. It. So them dudes can can travel two two grids per turn. So uh, we're actually on the wrong pad here. Here we go. Let's see. Yeah, we're we're going to make it uh, make it easy. So, our skeleton dudes are in vicinity now, and uh, where is my fire elemental? So many spells. There we go! I love the fact that we have nice looking sprites nowadays. There we go. So our Hellhounds are going to get some attacks in too. And uh, my my second squad, I'll, I'm going to leave that one back there. Of course they're going for my Hellhounds, but uh, well, that's okay. Oh, whoopsie, that's uh, not what I intended to. The good thing about our Hellhounds is they, they regenerate. It'll take a couple of turns, but... Uh, the Hellhounds will recuperate from that fight. So... As you saw there, nothing happened this turn. That's because both parties failed to uh, hit each other, but uh, we took them down. So I gained some gold, I lost some mana. And these dudes, they are just a little bit banged up. Sadly. We're going to wait this turn here. What do we have here? Cockatrice, Sprite, Giant Spooders. That's a bad one. This is a really, really dangerous uh, little dungeon. Does it save the entry? Yeah, alright. So. What's, what's extremely positive for me so far, this is exactly what I played back then. Just a few buttons have been moved around. That's okay. I don't mind. So, where the hell are these are these cities stopping me from settle down somewhere? Hmm. Cursed villains. Okay. Zulok. Yeah, that, that's where the problem is at. Only one orc spearman gu uh, guards this place? Okay, we're, uh, hold my beer. So, uh... My dear Spearman, you guys are in trouble, because you're guarding a city that you can't hold, you know. We're hopping on over there, and, uh, well, let's go for a nice little fire elemental summon there. There's a very high chance that the fire elemental alone will be enough. Good lord, I thought I said I, I, I lowered the amount, the, the sound there. It's still way too loud. Yeah, like you see there, the spearmen have no chance against that dude. To to illustrate that a little bit, the fire elemental's attack rating is 12, and uh, each point is one attack roll that the enemy can that that this unit can take, and each armor point gives you one defense roll. So this guy, as you see, has only one attack roll and two defense rolls. So, if this thing has 12 attack rolls, 
and it succeeds to, with, let's say, six of these rolls, it will deal six, six damage. And then the enemy gets to roll against that. So uh, this is an orcish town. Keeping it would be smarter in terms of fame, but destroying it will give me the ability to finally build me a city wherever I want to. And uh, there we go. And the, 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 these grids are much better than the ones that we had there. So, uh, nature node, power nine. Nodes uh, and such are where you draw your mana from. Okay. This looks like a great spot for another city. Meanwhile, the Hellhounds of Raidbury are are recuperating. Right on. So, well, let's see. Sprites and spiders. It's actually not that terribly hard defended. Hey, free gold. That's why you have the that's why you want to have these uh, scouts everywhere, you know. So, here we go. That's where we're setting up shop. So, the outpost of Brighthaven. This thing will remain now an outpost for a while. Hey! Th these settlers... Are these settlers no longer... Interesting. In the, in the old version, settlers were completely senseless, but it seems like... The settlers have transformed into spearmen, uh, swordsmen, and uh, that's that's a behavior I didn't expect from them. Yeah, well, a couple of things seem to have changed after all. So, can we set on up a worker now? No, well, that's sad. Okay, so the folks at this spot, I sent them. I, I want them to guard the city. Swordsmen are not particularly powerful in the first place, and therefore... Fire Giants! Bloody! That's not good. Eh. So, audio. Let's hope that the sound is uh, no longer blasting off my ears. So did we check out that spot? No, we didn't. So a tower of sorcery. I ah ah. These are the these are the portals over to the other world. Phantom beasts, nagas, phantom warriors. Yeah, lots of bad news. Just like I expected. Okay, nothing nothing. Uh, uh, no big surprises here. So more fortresses. Okay. So this will take a while until Brighthaven has developed into a real city, but it's totally worth the waiting. Brax the Dwarf, our first hero! Well, yeah. So, Brax ain't too much of a special person. He's a melee fighter. He comes with naturally enchanted armors, uh, weapons. His biggest stat is that he has crazy many HP. And he's fast on mountains. I'm personally not a big fan of his, but at the same time, having a hero is much better than having no hero. Period. So, two fire elementals. No, thank you. Although I think we could perfectly breach that. A couple of phantoms. Ah, well. Dangerous shish. An ancient temple. I gotta say, those ruins look quite dandy now. Phantom Warriors, yeah. Maybe. That's something we can break. That's one of the really, really cool things, being a uh, proficient Chaos Mage. You just have your uh, you just have your pocket fire elemental wherever you go. As long as you have mana, that is. But uh er, Yeah. So there we go. The Phantom Warriors annihilated themselves. So, we've lost some mana, we've gained some gold, but that doesn't really matter. Okay, wonderful. Man, I love this. This is, uh... 
in so far really really cool because it just there's a how to put it it's just what I what I used to play but it's it finally doesn't look like crap anymore because believe it or not I I did buy the remastered version on on GOG and I I somehow didn't enjoy myself too much with that because admittedly times have changed and uh, you know, things that were way back when in the 90s are just something I don't like these days anymore too much. So there's one fire elemental inside there. I don't have enough mana to summon me my own, so I gotta be a little bit more conservative. Kragar, the orcish city of Kragar. So Kragar, well, we cannot really see, but whatever, we're going to take that down. Let's go! I love this. Man, I've been waiting so long for that one. That's been one of my personal highlights of this year. Because uh, I I spent so much time with Master of Magic as a teeny. Damn, I played that game a lot. And uh, this looks great. I like it. So these dudes will get close to our troops next turn, so... We're just going to wait it out. Alrighty, so our dude Brax, he's damn weak now. Here's one thing about the Firehounds, they have Fire Breath. This is pretty fun because they get to attack before the enemy can retaliate. That's why why uh, the, these, these troops are so fun to play with. The Hellhounds aren't particularly powerful, but as you see there, they did tons of damage before the enemy spear fighters were actually able to react to that. That's Fire Breath. It can, of course, also not work. Sometimes the Fire Breath just doesn't trigger. And uh, then the, the this mechanic doesn't do too much. Alright, so... What would Brax? is blocking these guys quite proficiently. Why not? Come on, dude. It, your, your hero doesn't receive more XP or anything if he gets to do the killing blow or anything. Damn. That was not what I wanted. So we'll leave this to the Hellhounds. And unlike the other city, this one I'm going to keep. Because, you know, why not? We can use another city. We have pretty much pretty nice area of control here. We can set up a small city in between here. Yes, it's going to be a little bit of a fuckly duckling city, but whatever. It's not the worst. Has 21 person production bonus. So, here we go. But most importantly, the environment of the, the location of Kragar is just too good. Blocks the entire um, area there. So, I like it. Okay, good stuff. We even conquered ourselves a new town. So, another Tower of Wizardry. These towers, they usually contain the worst enemies you could imagine. So, better be careful with them. Okay. So, well, Kragar, um, the first thing we require, if I remember correctly, is something to keep the people happy, so let's build a granary here. I'm going to keep the hellhounds in the city for now, but I'm going to send Brax around to, to check on out what's happening around there. There we go. Good. Nice. So one, one squad of war bears. We should be able to take that down. War bears aren't that horrible. I'm just sadly quite low on mana already. So there we go. War bears. So war bears' only big thing is they have fairly high attack, and they are fast in mountains and they come with naturally enchanted weapons. But beyond that, war bears are pretty, well, some of the worst summoning, summonable item, um, troops in the game. I mean, their, their big benefit is they are early troops that hit quite hard. 
so. Damn, that didn't rock. Yeah, whatever. Let's hope our dude does roll better than I did with my lightning bolt. Oh, that doesn't look good. But maybe he'll do it after all. Fight's easier once one of these units is dead, because that's one thing about this game. The moment if there's uh, two units visible on on somebody, yeah, well they killed each other. That was not good. We're going to reload that. Auto safe. Yeah, like I said, Brax is not too impressive in the uh, first place. There are impressive heroes in this game. Brax the Dwarf ain't, uh, ain't one of them. Although, I gotta say, if he has the proper items and he has a high level, well, all heroes can be basically one-man armies, even Brax the Dwarf. But, uh, well, there are much better people for that job. Let's just put it down like that. Okay, so uh, not without my war, without my war dogs, eh? So there's another fire elemental. We have already seen how much of a one-man army Brax is right now. So, well, probably not. Okay. Hey, Balkan. Happy to see you, man. So, uh, besides that, everybody who's uh, regular here, I'm back. I'm alive. I'm past my flu. And finally talk again. And feel like a normal human being again. Well, I, I did never feel like a hum hum normal human being. Don't quote me on that. But, uh, yeah. So, what do we have here? Shadow demons! <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So, our dude Brax, let's see. Hero level, experience. Where can I see your XP? There. 29 of 60. So, when he's leveling up a little bit more, we can make something with that. What do we have here? A squad of ghouls. Damn. I'm so low on mana right now. Can't do much. I shouldn't do much. Okay. But all in all, I'm quite happy. I got uh, I got three cities at that point of the game. That's pretty rough. Uh, pretty good. <laughs> Can't talk anymore. Or at least, I can talk, but my brain doesn't uh, support me as I'd want it to. So, Brighthaven is a city now. Damn, I must have derped that one. So, does Brighthaven come with a granary? No, that's only my starting city that does so. Well, we're, we're going to let that city grow. Because right now, as you see, building anything would take 30 turns or more. Whereas, when we build housing, we just pump up the the population of that place and that's uh, that, that's all we require right now so another power node yeah well nice I do like my little realm here so my spearmen have leveled up experience is extremely important for every mundane troop Mundane troops are completely existing out of ex out of experience points, so to say. Okay, that's that. Gonna let Brax chill out a bit here. Let him get past his useless face. Meanwhile, our guardian spirit will explore the world for us. So it seems like we got off super lucky here because. I have the I'm living under the impression that this is an island that completely belongs to me now. Damn, we practically already won. Ah, jokes aside. <clears throat> it's really good to have an entire island alone for you, because the AI has to navigate to your uh, to your cities via ship and all, and it's always easier to defend. It's always easier to defend. So, Reedbury has reached citizen number six, and I bet that we still don't have any rebels in there. Amazing. So, let's put, put up another worker in here. Hey, Andre, of course I'm going back to, uh, to, to Dyson Sphere. I haven't abandoned the game, but uh, the problem was I was uh, smitten down for the last two weeks by a pretty heavy flu, and that bamboozled my entire my entire work schedule. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry about uh, these delays, but uh, 
I, I basically only followed the most urgent things and covered the most urgent releases while doing my best to get better, to get well as fast as possible again. It wasn't too much of a pleasant ride in the last two weeks, admittedly. All right, so one thing I didn't notice in the, in the past, you had a much more, much more visible way present of presenting you that something new requires your attention. I'm feeling massively better. Thank you, Henry. The worst part was that I, I that it went on my on my throat a lot and on my voice, so it was really hard to talk and all. Mm, I'm giving I'm giving Stardeo some time to 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 simmer, you know. In my opinion, Stardeos ain't ready yet. It's going to be an amazing game, but I want to give it a little bit more time before I get back into that. So the city is now going to train itself some lousy, puny, crappy spearmen, and uh, by saying this, I even gave them quite the compliment. Seriously, the spearmen are... They are there to, to make sure that the, the army slots aren't left open, but that's their primary use. I know that sounds a little bit mean, but uh, I'm just realistic. So, Brax is racking up his experience slowly but steadily, and as soon as the Kragarians have uh, brought up some some battle orcs, we're going to check on out what happens there. So, Brighthaven, you have two workers now, uh, two citizens now, so let's build something on over here. I want a... Let's see, the smithy doesn't unlock anything directly, does it? No. Well, the smithy allows marketplace armory and stables. Let's check out the environment. We got we got a nice amount of woodland around here, so let's let's start on out with a sawmill. This will take a damn long time until it's done, but the city will grow over the course of the time. Is this another civilization game? This is basically... Mm, I don't know if you know Age of Wonders, but this is basically the game that has a clearly inspired Age of Wonders. You play a mage, you research magic, you try to conquer the world, you summon beasts, you always get to play with some fantasy race. Here, well, the Hymen aren't that massively fantasy, but, uh, well... It's uh, it's it's one of the masterpieces of the '90s that I that I love to play, but it's basically it's a very very close relative to to Civilization. That's absolutely right. Yes. So I totally dislike that Reedbury has only that one puny spear spearman. Did you know that I'm losing the game as soon as this spearman falls and that city gets conquered? Now you know. Ah well. So, whatever, um, Kragar has now its uh, troops to defend it. The thing is quite easy. As a Chaos Mage, I can summon troops directly during the fight. They only last for one fight, but this is all I need to have a, uh, a nice impromptu uh, response whenever, whenever somebody wants to raid my places. Alright, so, speaking about raiding places... Let's go. So, War Bears, I brought my dogs. The coolest part about this is it looks awesome. Like, the old version of Master of Magic was still very, very playable and a great game in all respects, but it looked like crap. This doesn't look like crap anymore. I like that. So, I'm conserving my mana here. Because I really don't think I want to spend unnecessary mana into that fight. So here we go. Sick'em, boys. Here we go. So, yeah, I'm going to send in Brax there as well. There we go. So, for winning this, we got plus 2 XP. 
So it's always worth taking these uh, challenges. So down there is another fire elemental. Here's one thing about fire elementals. If you play with troops that have fire breath themselves, they are logically not quite susceptible and that, eh? So uh, we got to we got to work around that, or just we got to accept that, or or weaponry isn't as effective against them as we would, would like to see. Alrighty, so we're going to give the orcs over here. Well, I want that library, library into shrine. So libraries are important because they provide research points. So. It's the game that laid the foundation for turn-based civ games. Well, first came Civilization, and then uh, this game came after. It's basically the fantasy, the, the high fantasy iteration of the old-school Civilization games. That's how I would have put it. You play as a mage, you have lots of spells that you can learn, you select by yourself what kind of uh, mage you play, you select how many spellbooks of a certain school of magic you rock, and uh, you select what species you play with or you start with. And uh, here we're, we're running the high, the high men, they live here. And uh, the every, every species has its own special units, its own racial tree, and a lot of things, so... Really good stuff. And somehow, oh boy, Behemoth. Somehow I feel like it does say so much about this game. That they didn't have to change it. They just had to slap in new sprites in it. And it's still a great game. Doesn't that say a lot? Sif Master of Orion, Master of Magic, Sif Windows, Sif 2, Master of Orion 2. Low risk gamer. I love the I love the summary. Here. I just wanted to show you these suckers. They're going I, I stand not a single chance against them. They are among the biggest things that nature magic can provide. They have 25 attack rolls with a chance of 50 person to hit with that. They are They are surprisingly plain. They don't have any special abilities except for 45 effing hit points. Sick resistances. I mean, they have a hundred percent chance to resist ten times. So basically, whatever debuff you fling at them would have to have at least a minus eleven to start scraping on their resistance. I hate these beasts. Um, <clears throat> there's a. I don't know of a campaign. I only know that this game always has been a random map generator. So we're fleeing. I just wanted to show you the behemoths, and. Uh, you know, or maybe I want to look at them myself. I don't know. I'm I'm quite hyped, you know. So the loading screens are quite uh, quite heavy, though. That's something I dislike because honestly, uh, I can recommend everybody to save scum a lot in this game because uh, it's super hard to know whether or not you're uh, going to win a fight or not. I mean these designators down here are quite good so let's see. Alright, we did quite well. That's okay for me. I think Brax even leveled up. No. So hero abilities improved Brax the Dwarf. So What the? This is new. I gotta check the sound. Alright, we found something. So, what the devs of this game did change though, is uh, the, the events don't work like they did back, back then. There's, uh, there's a lot more... Um, there's a lot more bone uh, meat on the bone there, which is excellent because that's where the game was weakest. So, uh, gotta say, I didn't expect it to be that good. I, I hope this stays like that. This feels like it's one of those remakes how how a fan like me 
wants to see them. Stay true to the core. Don't change too much. Change only the things that were glaringly bad, like the total lack of events. That was not because the game devs way back when were bad or anything. It was just like event systems and those, they were not exactly implemented uh, yet back then. Sounds a little bit crazy, but that's just how it is. So let's build up a marketplace here because a marketplace will allow me to produce uh, more food in the long run because a marketplace leads to a farmer's market and the farmer's market leads to more food and more food leads to more troops and more troops leads to more victory. Huzzah. All right. So I'm going to let Brax and his, uh, and, and his dogs chill out a bit because they, they are banged up. Your troops heal much faster if you don't let them run around wounded. So, so Collar, welcome. I didn't see you. Supposedly the AI is improved. I hope so, because the AI in the old version was ridiculous, and not in a good way. I'll send useless armies all day long, all day long, all day long. Basically, when at some point it was always the same scenario, regardless of your difficulty level. All four mages at some point declare war on you, regardless of your diplomacy. Everybody will funnel into you and try to kill you, and every turn a useless army trickles into your into your into your main city because they didn't take any effort to conquer any of your cities. The end. Sure, it was pretty sometimes they did pretty they did send really really nasty armies to your to your capital sure but as long as you defended your capital well it was basically impossible to lose the game it was fun this way but it was also a little bit weird if it's a lot of money it better be yeah yeah I, I was a bit i was a bit shocked about the price too admittedly i didn't expect expect to spend 40 bucks for a game out of a straight out of the 90s but, uh, yeah, well, milk my nostalgia, you. I don't like it. That's, uh, for me, the biggest downside of the game so far. Admittedly. All right, right now we cannot do much, but we don't need to do much. I mean, come on, I have all that here under my control. I can't expand much more. Because my, my heroes are, or my armies are banged up, and I don't have that many resources available right now. And uh, if possible, I'd really like to secure my capital a little bit more. Thank you. Okay, so, they're licking their wounds. Not quite there yet. Alrighty. Oh, I, I, I gotta admit, when I was a teenager, I didn't uh, really pay attention to the uh, cheating behavior of AIs, but uh, I only know that I did enjoy myself a ton. I, I never played on hard difficulty because that led to a Zerk that I couldn't uh, defend against. I was a, I was a person chilling out on, on normal difficulty all day long and enjoying this game, like a ton. Why is it so enjoyable? Every one of your heroes turns into a one-man army at some point. Your mage learns so impressive spells over the course of the time that let alone that just alone casting the spells out of your out of your spell book is an insane fun thing to do. And uh, the heroes they can be equipped with weapons and, and other stuff which uh, which which powers them up insanely. And uh, there's just so many great little things. This game has only a handful of mechanics, but every one of them is uh, is executed so well that it feels very, very deep and, and rich due to that. So, a bunch of hellhounds. Okay, so what sent the familiar? No, we don't send the familiar. Right. Damn. Jeez. Familiar, what are you doing? Are you stupid? I bet. Alright, so auto combat is sucky as it always was. Don't trust the auto combat. When, when were you able to trust the auto combat ever? I mean, yeah, Songs of Conquest does a really, really great job there. 
This game has the best power progression of any 4X of its time, true that. The only thing that was uh, comparable was Master of Orion, but if I remember correctly, Master of Orion and Master of Magic came from the same developer, so it doesn't come as a big surprise. Master of Magic and Master of Orion, these games, they were just... Uh, mm. I must say, whoever did this, please rework Master of Orion 2 the same way. I don't want the rework I got the, the last time. The, the Master of Orion rework was a mess. It was horrible. They, 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 they needed to modernize it gameplay-wise. This is the way to go. Don't modernize anything gameplay-wise. Just, just keep it as it is. It's amazing. I love it when games stay true to their roots in that way. This is really what I was waiting for, and it's making me so damn happy. I said Master of Orion 2. Either I thought only I said it, I said it or, I, or you misheard me. I'm clearly talking about MO2. MO1 was basically just a sketch of what uh, of what was to come. Totally. Totally uh, agreeing with you there. The second part was where the game really shone, but I must say, I played the hell out of both of them, because they both had. You know, back when Master of Orion 1 was new, it was just the best game in this regard. It just became better after. <laughs> it just became better after uh, with a sequel. Alrighty, so, we gained yourself some resource here, nothing uh, there. <laughs> because it was originally released of Fluffy Dust. <laughs> well, I had a CD version back then. If this is any cons of any consolation for you. Ah, well. This is a good trip down Nostalgia Lane, I tell you. Okay, we're, we're going to get on over to Brighthaven and Liquor Wounds there. Because the, the Hellhounds are banged up again. And until I get more mana per turn, I won't be able to change much about that. The army size, I mean. Summon units are great, because they don't need food. And uh, they they are they just come ready served. Or wait a sec, we should sit ourselves into the city if I remember correctly. And the city reveal is especially good. Um, there we go. I'm trying to discover the vicinity of my islands here as well as possible, so I can check on out if there's anything worth discovering here. Yo, my man Brax! Look at us! So, he got himself a new level up, and uh, one of the most important things here is his chance to hit went up. So, I'm going to illustrate. Before that, his chance to hit was 30%. Now it's 40%. That's an upgrade for every one of these points, because before that, he had the ability to roll for a success against 30%, and now his chances to succeed are much, much higher, and that's pretty important. Rocket to the Stars, yeah, I played Master of Orion 2 so much. Yeah, well, I feel like in the 90s there were there were a lot of really, really memorable games that have been made. So... Er. Well, my dude, that wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. Give back the sword fighters. They belong to Brighthaven. Thank you. Alright. So, meanwhile, we're guarding this out. I mean, I wanted to let them heal up originally, but, well... Obviously, my plans, they don't count too much. So, Krakar has now finished... What did they finish? Um, Where was the tap to see what is built in the city again? There was one really cool overview thingy there. Ah, here. So, we got a granary, we got a library. They already did that right on. Okay, so, Reedbury. They they finished the marketplace. That's what I saw there. So, I want the, I want the farmer's market done. And, oh, well, I'll tell you what. Do we have forest tiles? Yep. So, Reedbury... You guys go for a sawmill first. And uh, after that, yeah, we'll talk after that. I want to recruit myself some bowmen, because I really feel like it's about time to get there. 
Okay, so, uh, yeah, this is exactly what I wanted to play. I'm so happy, I can't tell you guys. So, what's up there? Sprites. Sprites are really horrible, uh, entities. They... They're basically paper, but they have a uh, super strong ranged attack. So, well, the sword fighters would have been actu actually a good uh, cannon fodder against them. Hmm. Well, we're not going to do that. So instead, I think I'm going to uh, to roam across the lands here and uh, give myself some action here. We should be able to toast those ghouls. I love it how well they all look now. Damn. All these things have uh, finally well-made sprites. I love it. So the thing about ghouls is uh, they they really have that super un unhappy thing there. Hey, is it gone? No. Ah, here, create undead. Basically, the TLDR, if the ghouls kill you, you return as a ghoul. Cool, hey? Ah. There we go. Take a firebolt, man. So all in all, ghouls are one one of the most special units the Undead Faction has to add in store, or the Death Magic. Shepin, welcome! These are Death Magic summons. They are really, really amazing in so far as they can provide you free reinforcements, and that's something not too many uh, summon units can do. But the combination of one Firebolt and a bit of... Uh, and a bit of... Uh, Hellhound action was all it took. Alright, right now, admittedly, the Hellhounds are more the superheroes and uh, Brax is just their sidekick, but things will change. Okay, wonderful. Alright, I I'm already so relieved already that uh, the game is not a, uh, is not a uh, big disappointment. You know. Alright, fire elemental, let's go. Ah, come on, you can do it, I believe in you. <clears throat> Did it, so. Oh, I could have uh, went deeper into the dungeon, damn. I'm not used to that. <laughs> I'm used to, dungeon is done, now get the hell out of here. So, uh, this place here ha has amazing spots for new cities. Good God, this is uh, this is huge. We should definitely settle somewhere, and we yeah we have one coast city. That's important. Just realized when we're sitting on an island, we definitely need one coastal town. Okay, let's uh, let's buckle up and uh, chill on out a bit. I will send my guardian spirit over to Brighthaven because I will ultimately use him on a uh, on a uh, magic node. Not right now, but uh, quite soonish. So let's let our peeps guide there, and uh, there we go. Okay, man, this is amazing. Now I just need to settle down on which kind of uh, gameplay I want to play, and then we're going to do some playthroughs here, guys. Because that's one fun thing about this game. I've played it so much, I think, uh, well, I will be able to entertain you guys quite well with that one. Alright, one more turn until the sawmill's done. That's going to be very cool in so far as we have now access to real ranged units. There we go. And also it increases the production of forest hexes by a lot. Nostalgia mode on. Oh yeah, I I, I cannot uh, second this enough. So let's go. Mm. Let's put in some bowmen in between, and I think some settlers don't hurt either. Come on, let's do this. Or wait a sec, not not in this order. We're going to we're going to sneak the farmers market in between. This this looks more like it. Okay. 
So Reedbury is of course using these troops for its own protection. Well, for me the problem was that the uh, the original game didn't age too well for me. So uh, all sources of magical power income will be shorted out until the ripple passes. That's interesting. That's new. Back when you were just forced to accept these. I like this. I really, really like this. This makes uh, all the old elements of the game, so to call, so much more vibrant and so much more meaningful. Well, this is pretty good. High humans, yeah. The high humans from Reefer Town hail you. Alright, so... There we go. Now the city is looking not as uh, puny anymore. It was really, really making me nervous to have my capital so crappily defended there. So Brighthaven's queue is uh, completed. Let's change that as well. I really wish that we could get some some in-your-face uh, thing, what like way back when, when a when a city has no more queue. This is now extremely subtle. This is extremely subtle. For example, I have no clue how long my Orkish town was already without uh, without employment, and I don't like that. The UI of the original is looking crappy, I know. That's true. Hello! Yeah, shop okay. So, my smartphone is getting ki kidnapped as a... Uh, As an alarm clock. Okay, so Brighthaven is growing. What do I don't need to kidnap it? Okay, we'll leave it right here, right beside the microphone. <laughs> and now I'm getting threatened. <laughs> Audio terrorist. Well, that's the family. So... I'm gonna let my uh, dude guard here. I want one of those nature nodes as quick as possible. They might be not ideal, but... Uh, they are the best we can get there for now. Okay. Hey, the farmer's market. As you see there, we have now a plus five on food generation. That's just what I want to see. And obviously, the settlers will be done very soon as well. That's great. So, uh, well, Right now, I'm just letting my cities grow and build up my uh, my armies a bit. I'm training a new um, regiment of settlers at Reedbury because I want to build new cities. I have an entire island for me alone, and those shiny sparkly spots that you see there are all adventures filled with monsters that, or, or dungeons that are filled with monsters that we can and should conquer in the next time. But until then, I need to grow my infrastructure, grow armies, and uh, all in all, I'm not powerful enough for most of uh, these uh, challenges to tackle. So I'm sending my, 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 my settlers now on over here, because that's the staging point for one hell of an impressive city. So, 28 citizens, that's... Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, in the old version, 27 was the maximum, so there must have been some slight changes to that system as well. <coughs> okay, so here we are going to build up our, our capital a little bit more. So, I want a Sage's Guild that provides research points so we can research those really powerful spells a little bit uh, more early so these guys have their uh, orders that's cool and well problem is right now mostly that my troops are just not cutting it oh yeah there's another thing that we should do at Reedbury engineers engineers they build roads between towns 
What's their player character? Um, you're playing one mage. You're selecting his spellbooks. That's basically the uh, magical expertise. And you select what kind of spells you... What, that was the wrong one. You will research what kind of spells you have available. is dependent on what uh, kind of spellbooks you got. And um, some of these spells are enchantments, direct damage, summonings, city enchantments, curses. Oh, this game has a wild library of really amazing spells and creatures. And uh, basically, magic replaces a technology system in this game. You don't have technology. Everything you research and the like is magic. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. And there's a lot of different mages you can play, but you can also play custom mages as you want to see, as you see fit. And uh, well, you guys can expect to see this a little bit more often here on my channel because this, uh, well, this is just what I want, what I was waiting for. You know, I I loved this game back when, and uh, I merely didn't feature it because it looks like uh, like ass nowadays. And no normally I don't even say words like that on the camera, but uh, if you look at it, you would agree that it looks like ass. So, let's build a farmer's market and a sawmill. The farmer's market is increasing the population growth and the food production. Food is something we require to, to hold a standing army. The more food we have, the more troops we can hold. So, without food, you can't hold any troops. So therefore, it's really important to have that. And also, the faster your population grows, the faster you gain gold, the faster you gain uh, production points, which allow you to spew out even faster uh, your, your troops that you want to have, and so on and so forth. What this game doesn't have is uh, a classic um, development of, uh, of terrain, like uh, terraforming in um, civilization. A plague hits Kragar. No! So we could... Ah, yeah, let's pay some gold to... to soften that flow. It even gives me fame. Now that's good. Fame is uh, influencing how powerful the heroes are that apply to uh, stay at your place. The heroes are basically, well, how to put it, the salt in the soup. <laughs> they are super mighty leveling units here, Brax is one of them. So, he's gaining XP, here's his character sheet, it's uh, his special skills. Every hero has different special skills, can be uh, equipped with up to three artifacts, which change up his skills even further. And yeah, it's a pretty wild and cool ride. So, Yorkbury! There we go. A new city always starts on out as an outpost. As you see here, it ain't a city yet. And as soon as these houses here are full, it's going to grow into a fully fledged outpost. And yeah, that's a new mechanic. Obviously, the settlers get transformed into swordsmen. That's new. Oh, that's cool. So, Reapery has finished its Sages Guild, and now they're training their engineers. That's great. Been waiting for those. So, Yorkbury. There we go. And there's our engineers. Engineers build roads. That's that's what engineers do, you know. So, let's see. Er, I need to get on out of the city first, I think. Here, special actions. Build road. Wasn't there a build road 2 action back then? Oh, well, whatever. Do city get further borders? As far as I know, no. I think the city borders are a static thing, but... Uh, it's been a hot minute. But I think overlapping city borders were no thing in this game, no. Alright, so since we have now some food on the, on the, on the side... We are going to build ourselves or train ourselves some Orc Shamans. Orc Shamans are really cool. They are a low-grade ranged unit that really provides quite some oomph for quite a low buck. 
Other species do feature um, mages or priests, and uh, stuff like the shaman. They are the uh, tribal, the tribal iteration of these uh, troops, so to say, and therefore they are weaker, but earlier accessible. In a nutshell. So outpost expanded. Yorkbury is no longer. Ah, I hate this. Damn it! You guys shouldn't. Uh, stop your jobs only because I click somewhere. Oh well. So I'm going to leave the city until it has grown even more because right now the only citizen is working as a farmer. Farmers don't produce too much uh, production points so if I would be building anything now it'd take forever and I don't like things that take forever. So there we go. I'm waiting instead for more people at Yorkbury, so that grows faster. Okay, nice. This is one hell of a great start, no, not gonna lie. Right now it looks like we're uh, not doing much, but the development phase of this game is always looking a little bit like that. Okay, beautiful. So the first thing I want to do is I want to connect the cities all with roads. Roads do not only give you a faster traveling time, they also provide trade. So it's uh, two birds with one stone. So what can we do here? Lose two food per turn. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to lose gold instead. We have researched chimeras! Wonderful! Hell yeah, I like that. So, that's one, one badass summoning spell we got there now. So, now we get to, uh, to select what we want to research next. Um, going to research summon hero because I know from experience that this is just a great spell. And, uh, well, thing about chimeras is they have an upkeep cost of 10 mana per, per turn. It'll take a while until I can't afford something like that. So we're going to be careful with that. And here, speaking about careful, there's some monsters coming from... From where? They come from the tower. Sometimes those dungeons spit out monsters randomly. And you have to, uh, you have to react to that. That's why it's quite valuable to clear these places out, so they can't bother you in the future. But, well, this doesn't uh, hurt us too much. It's just a couple of war bears. They're not too scary at all. So, here we're just going to step one grid back, because the uh, war bears have a movement of three. And attacking is also costing you movement points, so this way we just step back. They spend all their movement points. Ah, oh, well, they decide to waste it uh, either way. Alrighty. There we go. Yes and yes, I, I don't know which uh, question you were referring to, Chris. Um, care to explain? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, alright. These, uh, these war bears seem to be rolling lucky as hell. Okay, so... Let's see how this will play out now. <clears throat> That's better. Ah, uh, here we go. And let's leave that uh, killing blow to Brax. Here we go. Not the best fight so far, but yeah, whatever. Better than letting that run into Yorkbury. Okay, everybody, I'm going to drop the ball here. I wanted to uh, give this one a nice uh, look around. Oh yeah, give me that thing. We might not be able to use it now, but I know I will have a hero one day that will use it. So, um, yeah, expect me to stream that once in a while more often. Or maybe even later, I can't tell yet. But uh, I, I wanted to, st to tip my toes into that. And the water is nice. Maybe we'll play some more Torin, I can't say yet. But uh, yeah, thanks for hanging around, you all. See you all next time. Leave me a comment down below if this has been a video on demand for you. 
feel free to subscribe or just check out in the description box. There's my Discord and my Twitter. I do announce all my streams there and uh, be my guest. Check it out. I'm really, really happy you guys were around and uh, see you all next time. Have a good one.